What's going on, YouTube? Well, I finally got this out of the, off the shelf, and uh, we're going to look at it. I finally found it, and actually, these are cheap right now. There's one online retailer that is selling these below what they typically go for. I'm sure that not everybody wants something like this, but I love it. It's great. Obviously, we've gone over these wagons' flaws in the previous cars that we looked at. They do have, I think, an 85 or an 86 Grand Marquis Colony Park out. That's red on red. And that's actually a cool-looking car. That just hit the stores, the online stores, basically. And uh, you can get that one, too. So I'm kind of in the air about trying to get that car while it's still available. The white one that I got when that came out, the white Grand Marquis, that has sold out. That's pretty pretty much not available anymore. So it was good I jumped in early. Now this one, they're still available. And I thought that was kind of cool. So I, it, it did allow me to, to actually wait a little bit to make up my mind. And then I eventually said, well, yeah, it'll go good with my other car. So, and I like the wagons. Um, this is the first time that I've seen the these wheel covers done in 118 scale and these are actually pretty good um, this was all jacked up and I'll go over why in a minute but the rest of the car not bad uh, I left on this time the leaf spring so you could see you know this was actually after a couple of videos I finally solidified the fact that those were a coil sprung rear end so it was like a four link but green light just puts the <laughs> The leaf springs on it so that's one of the big flaws on it uh, and then sometimes like the interior stuff can be different now this is an interesting car there's one picture of this and it seems like a theme with green light online of this car in real life you know like a period photo in the 80s this is supposed to be an 88 car which 87 yeah so 88 was the first year for this rounded front end I believe and uh, fuel injected, although a lot of these cars, if they had the 5.8 uh, 351 in it, that was carbed uh, until they discontinued this body style. You know, 92, when they got the aero cars, they dropped the wagon. So, really, 91 was the last year for this vehicle. I really do think they did a good job. And one thing that I can't find that was another mystery was this. You know, NYPD has a lot of vehicles that they use when they have these designations for different departments or sub subsets of the department or whatever they you want to call it. So, anybody knows what this stands for? Let me know. Very curious. Very curious. Uh, lighting was pretty good on this one. They do the NYPD style light bar where it's clear, and then they kind of do an amber in the back. And then the front half of the lens is red. So they did that pretty good. Almost decent with the shape. They're a little bit different in real life, but it's okay. Uh, I can't remember when I did that photograph if they had a spotlight on. I did find aftermarket spotlights. There is a online seller that does 118 scale spotlights. And they turned out pretty good when I did it on my uh, 75 Coronet. And uh, pictures of that car on, on Instagram. I was able to kind of retrofit it. Graphics are good. We looked at this car in detail on the other two chassis. This is the first time I saw this front end on it. We have the older 79 LTD Country Squire car. So we have our swing out tailgate that they do for green light. Use this so I can get under there. Very heavy hinge. They want to do that for cheapness and durability, so you can swing it open. Unfortunately, use the you lose the functionality of the dual tailgate, which this would also drop like a pickup tailgate as well. And this window on the real car would go down into it. Usually about a power function. Roof rack was on the car, the police version of this, so they left it on the green light one. And then they have this light blue interior. So I thought that was kind of policey looking. I uh, didn't have airbags back then in 88 yet on the steering wheel. So they did have that Ford steering wheel back then. That was that style. I think the grill is done fairly decent. Although a lot of the convict people I know 
um, they kind of have a problem with the way that it's been molded and it's not completely perfect but a lot of people take what they could get especially if it's a 118 scale station wagon from the 80s and 90s and not many choices so not completely accurate there has been comments in other posts about this you know there was all sorts of seats but by 88 uh, they had a bench seat, but a lot of them were the split bench and all that, so the dashboard looks pretty good. But the grill, so I did divorce this nose piece from the body, and I took the headlights apart because when they molded the clear backing behind this bezel, and actually, let's zoom in. The, the lens piece was far in. It, this was sitting way on top of it. Where the really... This is supposed to be inset. Let me see if I can... There we go. So I'm not... There we go. So this is like really inset and uh, in real life and more flush. So what I did was... You just had to work this. You had to open up the, the bezel part with a file behind it. And then you also had to smooth out the clear piece... And you also had to go in where the headlight buckets were and kind of get it to fit flush in there. But once that was achieved, you can see how the headlight is flush now with the bezel. It was way pronounced um, and it was sticking out and a lot of gaps were showing and everything like that. But once I took it apart, it really I saw that the casting did actually work. It just needed to be sanded. You can see how nice and flush it is up here now. So that really improved the looks of the car, in my opinion. I know it's not 100%, but if you compare it to the real car, it's decent <laughs> enough. It's not perfect. Again, this is a, a sub $100 car in 118 scale. Nowadays, having good detail is usually over 100 bucks. So I think the car is great. I like it. I just like these big cars. It's probably one of the reasons I overlook some of the issues with it. A lot of folks have commented that they can't handle it. Uh, so they'll pass. Which I, I completely respect. I mean, hard-earned money only can take you so far. I, I've seemed to like to throw it away on these type of cars. <laughs> I know they're not particularly the most detailed. But I they bring me joy. I do like them. And since they're kind of like a heavy-duty ch chassis, really, you can see how solid it is with the metal axles it's kind of fun to roll around I, that's why i like these and the monocos and the b-body pricers that i've been buying and and the graphics are nice we'll, we'll look again real quick i mean we've been on detail on this car we talked about history and about drivetrains and all that but they do a good job with the tampa work at least in my opinion 124 scale cars and the 164 not as perfect with painting but they all have their issues. And then if you want to look at the wheel cover real quick. It's missing some. A little bit of painting. Like the inside of this wheel cover would have been a little bit more flattened. But they got the shape out really good. They really did a good job. So I'm glad. I'm happy. And the Ford insignia is in the middle it's not off to the side like on their smaller cars i always put the insignia or the uh the car's badge always like off center and stuff like that another clamshell box too so there's our ford ltd Let's see if we can get like a kind of like a quarter shot there you can see it see it there and the box another period box kind of like the one what we saw already with uh, the NYPD Coronet, or the Fury. It was a Plymouth Fury, the 75 Fury. Same type of graphics. Here's your information on copyright and all that. It is an official product uh, uh, of Ford and the NYPD. They both signed off on it. And there's your, your barcode. It's like that holographic. Uh, let's see if I can get this on tape here. Or on, on video, I guess it's not tape. But that was kind of neat. Alright, so there we go. Had a lot of fun with this car. It's very 
interesting. They did use a lot of wagons, although it was mostly Chevys. I never really saw Fords when I was personally seeing the cars in the period. When I was out back in the day driving around, I'd see the wagons, but they'd always be, be Caprice cars, not uh, the Ford. So this is kind of an interesting choice. Maybe, and I probably think since they already have the Ford or Caprice, I'm sure they'll do a Caprice wagon eventually. I think the, a lot of their fans have requested it. <laughs> so there we go. Just a little quick video on this uh, 118 scale Ford LTD. It's kind of a cool car. Uh, well, let's match it up here real quick with a parting shot. Here's another one. One of my early acquisitions on the B-Bodies front, which is my uh, 75 Fury single headlight car, because it was back in 75. This was almost toward the end of an era, uh, 88, so very early 90s. They went to the all-white cars, uh, mid-90s. They did this scheme, so this is almost the last years of this, and Actually, this car is kind of like when they transitioned to the blue. So it's really uh, mid-70s, early to mid-70s, they went to this blue. And then that's kind of like the end of the blue, really. Then a few more cars to come with the blue, and then it was gone forever. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of, no more green lights. So, again, as I alluded to in the other video on 164 scale cars, there's, <laughs> I got a lot of green light we're going to look at. And i uh, very excited to share it with you all. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for watching and all your nice comments and uh, added subscriptions. I really appreciate it. Hope everybody's doing well. More to come. Till next time.